Hello everybody. Today I'm going to talk about how to use the poster detail editor within Movie Poster. Uh, so we have Movie Poster running here and the first thing you want to do is go to the web remote. Uh, if you're on the same machine as Movie Poster, the easiest way to do this is to right click on the uh, taskbar icon and go to open web remote. That'll open it right up for you. Uh, then you go in the menu and go to your poster cache. Uh, as you may know, this shows you a list of all of the posters that you currently have downloaded and saved in your cache on your PC. Uh, now if we want to edit one of these, uh, we can click on the gear icon on the right and go to view slash edit details. This will load up the poster detail editor and you'll see here we have details of all of the images and the poster metadata that's currently saved. We scroll down, we'll have banner image, the poster itself, uh, uh, landscape, fan art image, the trailer, uh, which you can view right in this window if you choose to, uh, disc image and the logo, uh, as well as information about the title, the year, tagline, and uh, various other information about the film itself. Uh, a bit further down, uh, we have a little bit more advanced features. We can change the resolution or aspect ratio tags for this movie. Um, the rating and studio are usually pulled down automatically from online sources, but if you'd like to have a particular resolution tag or aspect ratio tag on your movie when it's displayed as a coming soon poster, you can change that here. You just select the option you want and hit submit. Uh, similarly for aspect ratio. We'll assume this one's a 2.35 to 1 ratio. I really don't know if it is. And audio will we'll say it's probably in a nice Dolby Atmos. Uh, now you'll notice on this tab with the, the audio flags, there are multiple pages. Uh, these arrows up at the top will navigate through the different pages of images. Uh, there are a total of 87 audio flags. If you go into the studio, you'll find there are many, many more uh, into the thousands. Uh, so if you know what you're looking for, you can actually type in uh, part of the name and search for it to filter out your options. Let's go DTS HD. You'll also find you can view and edit the cast and change the order if you like. Uh, if you're using the uh, info displays, the ordering is important uh, since the top I think it's four or five actors are shown. Anything beyond that isn't actually shown on that screen. So if you'd like particular actors to be shown, you need to adjust that order. Uh, related posters. Uh, these are shown on auxiliary displays if you're using multiple displays. Uh, you can remove or add additional here if you like. Uh, simply add related and you can pick whichever ones you like from your existing poster cache. Um, just pick something here and that will get added to the bottom of the list here. Uh, protected option, if you enable that, uh, that will indicate to the program that uh, nothing should be automatically updated and it should not be deleted. Uh, so if you have any of the automatic uh, cache cleaning options turned on, if it's protected, uh, this poster will not be removed by the automatic cleaning process. All right, so then if you wanted to change an image, um, you see all of these have this little plus icon in the, the lower corner. Uh, if you click on that, you'll get a few options here. Uh, now the first one is the media store. Um, that's actually a folder that's stored on your PC. We'll cover that a little bit later. Uh, URL allows you to paste in uh, an online location. And web search will search the movie DB as well as fan art TV for images for that particular movie. And this is all looked up by the IMDB ID. Uh, that's why it's important that uh, any posters you add manually have the correct IMDB ID. Uh, it'll make things much easier for you going forward. Uh, you'll also see that the resolution is listed. So if you have a 4K display, uh, you may want to choose a poster with a higher resolution to get the most out of your display. Uh, we'll pick this one just as an example. Then we'll hit Submit. And this process is the same 
for any of these images as well as the trailer. Now once you've made all of the adjustments you'd like to, uh, go to the Actions menu and click on Save. And in a few seconds we should get a notification at the bottom here that uh, it flashed pretty quickly, but it did say that the data for this movie was saved. And if we go back to our poster cache, we'll see the new images shown there. And if we click on that title bar, um, the poster on the display will change in a second. There we go. Uh, so you'll see we have the new image that we chose. Uh, on the landscape display here we do have the uh, logo as well as the uh, landscape fan art image. And if you notice down at the bottom, the new tags that we chose uh, for DTSHD, the 2.35 to 1 and 4K images, uh, are all there. Alright, so uh, that's modifying an existing poster. Now if you'd like to add a new one, uh, if you go into the Actions menu, you have a couple options here. Uh, add new poster from web. Uh, this will search IMDB uh, or various other online sources. Uh, you can add posters for movies, TV shows, or games. Um, so if we want to search for the Avengers, um, we'll assume it's going to find us a nice Avengers movie. Uh, sometimes this does take a little while, as there are a lot of options out there. Uh, so we can add Avengers Endgame. I just click the plus here, and that adds it to the download queue. Uh, that will queue up everything to download, including the poster, the fan art, and all of the metadata. Uh, it can take a little while, uh, so we'll, we'll add a couple more here. Uh, let's add Infinity War. First Avengers movie, uh, Age of Ultron, we might as well have all of them. And then uh, we'll just wait a little bit here, and in a few seconds, you'll get more notifications along the bottom here. Once the download's complete and they're added to the cache, there we go. See, so Avengers Endgame has been saved. Um, they'll pop up here all in order. Uh, once the trailers are downloaded, you'll get additional notifications that the trailers have been saved. Uh, similarly for TV shows, if we'd like, uh, let's say, Friends, favorite show from the 90s, we can add the poster for Friends, uh, for James, we'll uh, throw Zelda in there, and we have no results for James. That function may be broken, I'll have to review that. So uh, if the game search is broken, how could we add games? Uh, how about we add one manually? Uh, this option is available for any type of images you'd like to add. Uh, we'll go to Add New Poster Manual. Uh, what this will do is bring us up a blank poster detail image with a generic ID. Now, I did identify a bug, and I don't know why this happens, but it's been irritating me here for a little while trying to make this video. Uh, so expand the actions menu right away. For some reason uh, this tends to disappear when we want to save later on and it's very important that you actually do save your changes. Uh, this seems to only happen when we're adding a new poster from scratch. It doesn't seem to happen when we're editing an existing one. Uh, but we're just going to leave that little menu off to the side there. Uh, so we'll choose some images. I'm going to be using the media store. Uh, now if you don't know what the media store is, it's just a special folder on your PC. Um, this on this PC, it's in my document folder, and for you, it should be by default as well. Uh, if you go to your movie poster folder uh, within your document file, uh, and then media store. And this is a folder where you can drop any images or videos that you'd like to use to create your own posters from scratch um, and have associated metadata. Um, now you might have seen here a little bit ago, I just had a folder mapped. This is a folder that's mapped, you see the IP address of uh, my dedicated movie poster PC downstairs. Uh, so you may want to just map a uh, network location if you have a dedicated poster PC that you want to edit posters on remotely, then you can uh, drag and drop files in there to use. 
so here we're going to be choosing the banner image and I'm just going to go through here and uh, throw in the images uh, that we're going to be using for this poster definition. I'll choose the fan art, that's for the landscape display. Uh, we can choose the trailer. Can't see the logo. Oops, there we go. That's the problem. And we change the width. It uh, messes up that menu. That's the problem. All right. Interesting. Okay. Let's try not to change the width of your window. All right, uh, we'll choose the rest of these images here. And we don't have a disk, but we do have a cartridge uh, the title. We'll populate that. Oh, there we go. It already has it for me. Must have typed that in once before. Uh, we'll populate the rest of this here. And there you see me accidentally changing the width of the window. That seems to be the problem here. Uh, with that menu disappearing. Hopefully we'll uh, not have an issue with that when we go to save. You see something is messed up with the layout of this page. These submit buttons are down a little bit too far. That's not where they're supposed to be. Um, but nonetheless, we'll, we'll go through this here. Not a very good example of uh, everything working the way it's supposed to, but you'll get the general idea. Uh, audio files, we'll do Dolby. And at least you'll see that the uh, program is not perfect. There are little glitches that I will still need to address. do it for my changes. Hopefully that save menu will come back. There we go. Hit save. And we'll see that the data has been saved. Uh, if we go back to the poster cache and we search for Zelda. Um, this is another bug that happens from time to time. When you search you'll get duplicate results. Uh, if that bothers you just hit search again and it should clear itself up the next time around. Uh, so if you want to see what we just created there, uh, we can click on the poster and we'll get that to show up here in just a second. There we go, we have the poster um, with uh, the landscape display here, with the logo down in the corner, all of the metadata that we chose is there. Uh, now I do see that we forgot to add the tagline. I like to have a tagline on all of them so we can go back in and you see everything that we added is there. And let's see a tagline. Let's do uh, open your eyes. Very first line of the, the game, if you've ever played it. We'll save our changes here. And now to go back to the cache. And if we tell the poster to show again by clicking on it in the list. Uh, it should refresh here in a moment and have our new tagline. There we go. There it is. So that is how to create a poster from scratch. Okay, so another thing that you can customize is the banner. If you don't want everything to show coming soon, uh, we'll go back in and adjust our Zelda definition here. Uh, go to Edit Details. And if we scroll down a little bit, uh, we'll see an option for a user-defined header. Um, there are predefined options. Uh, there's now playing, coming soon, welcome, which shows the uh, theater banner. By default, that's the Great Dane Cinema banner. Uh, or featuring, or none. If you just want to have a blank space there, you can choose none. Uh, we'll change this to featuring and uh, save our changes. And we see that the data has been updated. Uh, if we go back to the cache and have that poster show again. Once it refreshes, it uh, will show with the featuring banner instead of the coming soon banner. See, there we go. It makes a little bit more sense for things that have already been released. 
Yeah. All right, next I'm going to talk a little bit about custom posters. Um, so Movie Poster does have the ability to display images that are uh, just thrown into a folder. Uh, now by default there is a folder location uh, under Documents, Movie Poster, and Cache, and Custom. Uh, so this is a location that uh, you can just put a bunch of image files that you want to have shown um, that you don't want to go through the entire process of uh, trading a bunch of metadata for. Uh, this feature was added quite some time ago, uh, user request um, to display uh, random images. Um, so in order to utilize this, if you uh, go into the movie poster settings, go to other posters, and where this uh, custom poster section is, uh, just check the box that says show custom posters. Uh, you'll want to browse to that uh, location, uh, which is in documents, movie poster, cache, custom, and obviously if you'd like to use a different location, you can do that too. Now the frequency setting uh, denotes how often these posters are shown. Uh, more specifically, how many other posters are shown in between them. Uh, so here I have a frequency set of zero that indicates that uh, other posters from the cache are not shown in between these. Uh, if you have this set to two, then two other posters will be shown, uh, then one custom poster, two others, one custom poster, and so on. Uh, so we already have this set, so I'm just going to close this menu. Um, and that's really all there is to it to get custom posters to show uh, from images in a folder. Uh, however, you can be a bit more advanced. Uh, if you'd like to uh, have additional data shown, you can. Uh, so I'm just going to open up my web remote here. And if you go to Manage User Posters, you'll get a list of all of your image files that are in that special directory. And one of them here, uh, the Super Mario 64, if I open that one up, I just click on this header here and it will trigger it to be displayed. Uh, we'll see this one has a little bit different layout. We have a featuring banner and uh, a tagline and uh, you know that has to be defined somehow and that's done using a custom NFO file. Uh, if you'd like to know the layout of this, if you go to the Movie Poster website, uh, go to the definitive guide. Uh, there's a link to Google Docs right here. Uh, near the bottom of that guide there's a section called Poster NFO Files. And this is the definition of the layout of what those NFO files are. And they're really just XML files, and you can copy and paste from this template, or you can use an existing example from the cache and just modify the data as you please. Um, so if we were to open up this Super Mario 64 file that I've already created here, you just open it with any text editor. Uh, I prefer Notepad++. Uh, well, see, this is the data that's in here. So this is where the uh, featuring header is defined. This is where the title is defined. Um, the tagline is here. Uh, if you'd like to manually define uh, any other attributes, you can. Uh, you can set logo images, disk images, etc. Um, this is really an advanced feature, but if you want to do it, the functionality is there. Uh, however, for the most part, I do recommend the uh, previous process we went through uh, using the poster detail editor uh, to add a poster directly to the cache uh, with the attributes uh, using that editor. It's really much simpler to do.